Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to this new video tutorial series on creating a featured image slider using Angular 7 and ASP.NET Core. In the introduction video, I told you guys to watch the video how to set up your environment and I provided the link to the video in the video description. Now if you have followed this video tutorial on how to install MS SQL Server on Mac using docker container you should already have docker installed so you should have an icon like this which says docker desktop is running you should also have kitematic installed and kitematic is a gui application graphical user interface application that will be used to manage our docker containers so we have installed the ms sql server on a docker container since we are on a mac environment we cannot install MS SQL Server directly on Mac. Now, in order to start or use this uh, server instance, we need to first start our container. Once the container is started, we will have access to communicate with our server. And I have explained this in the setup video tutorial. So please watch it if you haven't watched it yet. After that, you would need to communicate. So you would need a application called as Azure Data Studio. It's a client that we are going to use to communicate. So if you are using Windows, you have something called a SQL Server Management Studio. Since we are on Mac, Microsoft provides us with an application called as Azure Data Studio. So whatever password you had, you have used to set up your MS SQL Server instance on the Docker container, you can use the same password to log in to your server on Azure Data Studio and view all your databases. In case if you want to change your password, you can go to settings by selecting your container and here you can change your password. Please note if you have used any special characters like underscore star hash in your password, you wouldn't see it here in the password. So Kitematic kind of uh, makes it invisible or doesn't show it. So sometimes some users will just copy this password and try to log in and it's, uh, they will uh, in the comment section tell me that the password is not working. That's because you are not using the password that you had used when you created this server. So you can what you can do is remove the special characters and just create a regular password like this and update, save the changes and then use the same password to login into your server instance so we are logging as system administrator authentication type is sql login it's local host and i'm going to paste the password here make sure the docker docker is running and the container also is started so now if i hit connect i should be able to connect to the database so we have a database uh, all the databases that we have in our server listed here and we are going to create a new one for our application using the entity framework course code first approach the other things that you would require would be the following application since we are going to use and test our web apis we need an application called as postman which can be downloaded from getpostman.com go to website go to get started and download the application for mac since i'm on a mac environment if you are windows it should show you the windows application to download i'm not going to use visual studio ide and the reason for that is i noticed that after i have added multiple classes and my code base increases visual studio kind of becomes laggy and it's very difficult to code i don't know if this is a bug in visual studio 2019 i didn't have these problems in visual studio ide 2017 for mac but I have this problem in Visual Studio ID 2019 for Mac. Therefore, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code and it works without any problems. So download it for Mac and install it. After you have installed Visual Studio for Code, we need to install uh, certain add-ons and I will tell you what exactly you need as we proceed. Once you have Visual Studio Code and Postman, that should be all all the applications that you need also make sure you've installed a chrome browser so we will be using chrome for debugging so make sure you install chrome as well and make chrome your default browser if you're using mac 
So that should be it for all the applications. Now let's go ahead and first thing since we are going to code a new project, we will create a new folder and call this as image gallery. So I'm going to call this image underscore gallery. We can name this uh, whatever you like. So let me just call this featured image gallery. So that's my where I'm going to create my project and add it to this folder using the terminal. So we're going to use terminal to create our .NET project. So the next thing that we want to do is install or update our Angular uh, CLI. So for that first thing we want to do is install Node.js. So go to nodejs.org and download the latest version of Node.js and install it on your Mac. So you'll have a package file like this, double click and then install the application. Since I have already installed Node.js, I don't need to install it again. Uh, if you haven't installed Node.js on your Mac, so I recommend you to install this. Please make sure you have the latest version. So I'm just going to close this since I already have Node.js. So now that we have Node.js installed, let's go ahead and install Angular CLI. And to install Angular CLI, we are going to use the following command sudo npm install dash g, which stands for globally angular forward slash CLI. It's going to ask you for your password, enter your password, and then hit enter. Now, npm is going to install angular globally on this computer and whenever you create an angular application it's going to use the latest version that you have installed globally so we're going to click yes and then we have added 57 packages from 61 contributors and we have angular installed on our uh, computer now to check that angular was successfully installed we are going to first run the command which is ng dash dash version and this should give us the version of angular that we have so even though i said that we are going to use angular 7 to create this slider application but as of now when i am going to create this uh, first video tutorial angular has been updated cli has been updated to the latest version which is 8 so we are going to use angular 8 not angular 7 to create this project so we, can, we are going to use the latest version so this is how you can check the version that is installed and that should be it for our angular so now let's go ahead and uh, cr create the ASP.NET Core application using our terminal. So first thing that we want to do is type cd and then cd into the folder that is our featured image gallery folder where we want to create this uh, .NET Core application with Angular 8. So let's type in the following command to do so. So let's type the command .NET. Uh, actually I'm going to use sudo .NET new angular application dash o and here we will provide the name of our application so the application that we want to create will be called as featured image gallery and I'm going to hit enter now as you see the process to create the application was uh, successful and if we go into our folder we should have a dotnet core application with angular 8 created using the dotnet core cli command line interface and now we should have an application here now let's go ahead and open visual studio code 
and inside the Visual Studio Code, first thing that we want to do is drag, open this folder and drag the application that we just created, which is featured image gallery, onto your Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code. And now let's close this. And now here we need to install certain add-ons in order for us to make this Angular application uh, work like Visual Studio IDE. So first uh, add-on that you're going to install is it's going to be C Sharp for Visual Studio Code powered by OmniSharp. Go ahead, find this add-on and install it. I have already done this. The next add-on that you're going to install, it's going to be Debugger for Chrome. As mentioned earlier that you need to install Chrome because we are going to use Chrome browser for debugging. So install this particular add-on and you don't need anything else other than these two add-ons. Once you have installed these two add-ons, the next step is to run the application and we are going to do that now. Okay guys, before we run this application, there's one important thing that we want to do is we need to update our client app, which is basically our Angular application inside this ASP.NET Core application. The client app, when you expand this folder, you should see there is a file called as package.json. Just click on that file and if you pay attention here, you will see that the version of Angular that was created by the .NET command that we run is version 6. Currently, we know that the latest version of Angular is version 8. So, we don't want to create this application using version 6 and run into problems where certain code is not working. We want to use the latest version for our development. So what we want to do is the best way is to just go ahead and delete this client app folder completely and recreate it using the new version of Angular. To do that, what I am going to do is first thing I am going to go ahead, close my Visual Studio code, go to this folder featured image gallery, and then open this featured image gallery project and delete the client app folder. I'm going to move this to trash. It will ask me for my password and I'm going to provide my password and delete this client app. Now I'm going to recreate this client application using the terminal and I am going to cd into my featured image gallery to make sure I am inside this folder. I'm going to click type ls and then I'm going to cd into the project which is featured image gallery and then click enter. Now I'm inside the project folder and inside the project folder I need to create my client application. So first thing I want to do is clear this command line and type the following command to create the angular application using the latest version. So we already have the latest version installed globally. So whenever this application will be created, it will always use the global latest version that you have installed. So I'm going to type the following command sudo ng new and type the name of your application. So I'm going to call it client app. That's what our application was called when we deleted it. And I am going to hit enter. I'll pass my password, hit enter. And it's going to ask you, would you like to add routing? So I'm going to say, yes, I would like to add routing. And then it will ask you what version of styling you want to use. I want to use CSS, so I leave it as default, hit enter. And now the terminal command that we ran is going to create the Angular application for us inside our project. As you see, it is not yet completed, but we can still see the folder. But we had already deleted this folder. This is the new version of the application that's being created. So this is the best way to do it. Some people prefer updating it, but there's always problems directly updating. The best way is to delete and recreate the client app. Now let's say, would you like to share anonymous data with Angular and Google team? It's up to you. I'm going to say no and hit go forward. So now the git command requires us to install Xcode. So I'm going to install it and agree. 
so we have already installed xcode then you should be able to uh, install it again or update it again very quickly but if you have not then app is it's going to download the xcode application and then install it So once it's done, you should see a message like this, which says the software was installed. Just click done and we are good to go. Now we can open back our Visual Studio code. And then now what I want to do is I want to drag the project once again to my Visual Studio code environment. And now I should have my client app. I go to my package.json file and then I should see that the angular version for my CLI is 8 and I have all the uh, latest version of angular uh, CLI installed in my application so I'm no longer using the default version which is 6 so this should be it for this video tutorial in the next video tutorial we will learn how we can run this application and how we can see it in our browser so once again, thank you for watching this video tutorial and if you have any questions, please use the comment section. I will also put down all the links for the website, required websites and the commands that were used in this video tutorial in the video description. Have a good day. Thank you.